Good morning. Good morning. Have any of you ever felt kind of like Jesus? <laughs> I see a couple nods, a couple people look like they want to kill me, and then the rest of you are kind of like, yeah, that's me. I was born, as former United States Congressman George Santos would put it, Jewish. My father is a Jew, and my mother a converted Presbyterian to Episcopalian. For most of my life, I didn't think too deeply into religion. If I had known what agnostic had meant as an 11-year-old, I probably would have been that. My father has never been really religious, so I found myself more often than not, attending church with my mother. I liked the idea of a God and this Jesus guy who loves me and whatnot, but I just never really felt the need for it all. That was until around middle school. This whole virus hits, the world goes into lockdown. I don't know if any of you remember that, but it was <laughs> a couple years back. Anyway, the world goes quiet, everything stops, and I reached this level of despair that I'd never really felt before. There was just this constant emptiness inside of me, and it felt like something was missing. I attempted to fill that void by doing various things and, and supplementing with a lot that just left me unsatisfied in the end. So eventually, I felt the need to turn to God, and I just asked him for a sign. I asked him for a sign that he's real and, and that this nastiness in the world will go away. And he responded with a verse a verse that I saw three times in the same week. Romans 12, 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And so, after that, I've attempted to live my life by this verse. And so now I'm gonna explain to you why my wisdom at 16 years old is better than any of yours. Okay. <laughs> Mark 16, 15 tells, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. This was always the hardest part of being a Christian for me. It can seem immensely daunting sometimes to preach to people, even people that you know, or to just talk about God. Uh, it, it's really hard sometimes, and I don't know, it's just it, a lot of people don't want to be seen as a religious fanatic and whatnot. However, I feel that we don't owe it to ourselves. We don't even owe it to God, but we owe it to these other people who need to hear the message. I'm sure you all have felt the feelings that I described earlier of the emptiness of something missing in your life. And for a lot of people in the world, that's how they feel all the time. And if I know that I can make that difference in just one person's life, I owe it to them to do it. So this is why, for the first time, I went way outside of my comfort zone and started the very first Christian club at my school. For a lot of kids who joined, it was their first time feeling God's love and they finally were kind of able to not feel that emptiness for just once in their life and really get to talk about God with like-minded individuals. And the greatest gift I got out of this was knowing that I was helping just a few kids get out of that disparity that I had felt for so long. The cross is heavy, and most will not make it if we cannot help them pick it up each and every day. The other way I have learned to live out this verse is by picking up my own cross and turning to God. What seems like the easiest thing to do is oftentimes the hardest. For a while, I tried to be perfect like Jesus, and I failed every single time. And I felt terrible about it. But as everyone in human history has done, besides him, I sinned, and I just tore myself apart over it. Because of this, I ended up sinning more and running away from God instead of shamefully facing him. Once again, I tried to substitute God for otherworldly desires that only left me satisfied for a second. It isn't until one can be content with their imperfections that one can truly live. Philippians 3.13 taught me that I am not perfect, but Christ has taken hold of me. It is crucial to be vulnerable in front of God and allow his love to consume me. Always remember that God is love. And God loves you, me, and everyone more than anyone can possibly comprehend. My, one of my favorite quotes that's not even in the Bible, and, and I think about this a lot when I'm not really feeling God or I'm just feeling kind of empty again, I remember that the God who created the mountains, the rivers, the galaxies, and everything else beautiful looked at the world and thought, 
it needs one of you. You have a purpose. God put you here for a reason. And nobody is perfect. At the end of the day, it's crucial for me to remember that although I may be Jewish, I am not Jesus. And therefore, am in incapable of being perfect. But as long as before every decision, I think, would Jesus do that? I'll be all right. Thank you.